We're gonna bounce some light back at Alicia. Holy mother. I think that's a different video. What's up YouTube? Today, we are in the most trash light we could possibly find. In shoulder season, we've got some dirty brown mud, some dead trees, everything you could possibly want to go wrong, essentially in one scenario. And I'm gonna show you for your portraits, the cheapest piece of photography equipment that'll have the biggest impact on your photos. Let's get to it. I don't wanna get bumped down the algorithm for these skinny jeans. That would be bad. Okay, so what we have to find right now is the worst location and the most trash light. And then we're gonna make it look good-ish. This is kind of trashy, like kind of like dirty, rocky, brownie. I like this. All right, so today we're back with Alicia Houston, who's gonna help us out. She has agreed to stare directly into the sun for the next like hour, two hours until the light actually gets good and then we leave. All right, ladies and daddies, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. We have the cheapest piece of equipment that will make the biggest impact in your photography. It is this, what is this, Panasonic Lumix? What is this? Yeah. This, <laughs> this Lumix camera, which will make your photos look fantastic. Just kidding, I shoot Sony, because I'm not an idiot. This is the number one piece of equipment for any photographer that'll make your photos better. Tripod. It would work better if it had a camera on it, but I'm just gonna squat real low for you. I'm just testing light. Lisa's is going off already. Okay, so before we get to the good good, I'm just gonna do a little bit of testing here and just see what the light looks like without anything. Obviously based on the way I'm squinting at you, probably not gonna look super good. Ready? We're shooting with the light, which is very aggressive. Now we're gonna shoot against the light, which is also aggressive. But I'm gonna try and put the sun, I don't even know if I can, because I gotta get so low. Um, but try and put the sun behind her and then use the back of her hair or her head to create some type of sun flare. This is it, we had the three in one combo. I'm gonna be focusing just on the diffuser though. Let's see. There you have it. Look at that, what a game changer. Come take a peek at this. Is it newer or newer? Like manure, like manure, manure. N-E-E-W-E-R. I think it's newer. Newer. Yeah. Newer. 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 And it's a five in one. I don't know what the other two functions are, but they're here. Bingo, bango. So try to hold it and step as far away from it as you can. Yeah, like that. Ooh, that looks so much better though. So obviously not ideal scenario, it's very windy right now. Um, the purpose of this was to show you the one piece of equipment. If you wanted to add a C-stand, you could do that to hold this up, maybe some sandbags. But obviously for the sake of this video, just us. I these look great. They honestly look sweet. Let's get a shot of Alicia putting this thing away. You know? Yeah. Prove it. Okay. So you you gotta you gotta kind of go like this. Go for it. Um, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, did you do it? Woo! Shoot! I'm impressed. And time. Hello, friend. I can't feed you things on YouTube because I'll get canceled. 
All right, so next we are using the Mini. And the reason we're gonna do this is because you don't always have an extra arm. So in that scenario, obviously it's super windy. Normally I only hire talent with three arms, but today we have leash, OVS, so she has to hold it. This is gonna help in a scenario where wind's blowing or you don't have a stand with you or whatever that may be. Obviously there's gonna be some give and take. So give and take being, you gotta shoot tighter. Let's try it. Magical. We're gonna bounce some light back at Alicia. Holy mother. I think that's a different video. Spicy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Initially, we started with my favorite, the workhorse lens, Sony Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4. I was shooting at 1.6 for the majority of it because it's so much smaller. We're gonna shoot to a tighter lens. So I'm gonna throw on the 24 to 70 2.8 Sony G Master. Love that lens. It's super, super versatile. Um, and you can see it in some portraits here. Let's do it. Look at that, nice. There we go, bingo. Well, I forgot to turn the polarizer on both times and I got my white shoes muddy. So, today's over, we're done. Hope you learned something. That's a wrap, like I said, as soon as the light gets good, we're gonna leave. I'm pretty happy with everything we got today. All the raws look nice and I'm gonna go back to the editing suite, show you the before and after. Alicia is a pro, thank you so much for helping us. Make sure you follow Alicia and we'll see you guys back to the editing suite. So throughout this video, you've seen a few of the raws. Right now, I'm gonna show you some befores, some afters, um, and just a little bit of the, like a basic editing process. So first frame here, raw, we have Alicia no scrim, just out in the sun. Second frame, we have Alicia with the scrim. Obviously, if she's holding it, we can crop it down, do whatever we want with it. But just to show the basic difference going back and forth from no scrim to scrim, or no diffuser to diffuser, makes a world of difference. So I'm gonna try and kind of open this photo up a little bit. Um, I like to call it like the decanter, kind of just like letting it breathe, seeing what we got, to, what we have to play with here. Yikes, it is harsh. So I'm gonna lower the contrast here, give me a little bit of information to play with. Let's bring those whites up a bit. I am Dutan colorblind, so I like to cook my photos a little bit so I can see what's going on of the colors that I can see. I've kind of raised the shadows a little bit, lowered the highlights, raised the whites, lowered the blacks, just basic stuff to let the photo breathe and just kind of see what we have to work with here. So before, after, as you can see, I'm gonna play the tone curve a little bit here just to make it look a little bit more natural if possible. I'm pretty happy with this. Essentially for what we're trying to translate here. Here's the before, oops, and here is the after. So you can see on this side of the frame, like there's not a lot we can do with these shadows. I'm just doing basic Lightroom touch-ups right now. Like I'm not going into Photoshop or doing anything crazy. I'm not doing any wild dodging or burning or anything like that. Um, and let's take this over to the scrim. Like already, even just looking at the photo, there's so much more information. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. Let's bring this highlights down. Shut it up a little bit. Same thing, just kind of doing that decanter if you want to call it that. Why is it called decanter? Because wine is fancy. Why not? You can see even just in the tone curve, we have way more room that we can play with here as compared to a little harsh. All right, now come the fancy and chroma glasses, the colorblind glasses. Whoa. Okay, so before and after versus before and after. Huge difference. So, two options here. If you are completely stuck 
and there's nothing you can do and you have to shoot in that really, really harsh light. Two things I'm gonna show you here. One, we can simply take the contrast and just take it into the gutter. Just drop it down all the way down. It kind of makes the photo look almost analog in a sense. Um, but what it does is it allows us a little bit more room to play with. So if I'm just messing with taking the contrast down and then jumping straight into the tone curve here, it gives us more room to play with for a nice, a bit, a bit of a softer looking image. Again, obviously it's not gonna be perfect. You are working within the constraints that you've been given. Sometimes the client just wants what they want at the time that they want it. So get new clients. So again, this would be the before without lowering the contrast right here. And this would be the after. So you can see that it gives you a lot more information to play with. Again, not perfect, but this is the best you can do with what you've got. Other option is shoot backlit and try and get that light behind them. This raw is very, very harsh. But what I can do is I can lower the contrast, bring a bit of information out in the subject, and then I can raise up the exposure, and I'm just gonna blow out the background. Because in this scenario, we have no other option. It was real bright. Raise the shadows a little bit. Let's warm this up a little. Yeah. Okay. Bring that clarity, hit the dehaze a couple times. Here's the before, and here's the after. So, as you can see, diffusion, scrim, that's 100% the way to go. It's light, it's portable, it's affordable. You can take it with you pretty much anywhere. I hope this helped. I hope you guys learned something in this video. Thanks for coming to Rome with us, and I'll see you in the next video. Is it newer or newer? Like manure. Like manure, manure. N E E W E R. Newer. 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 Newer.